Hi. Oh, I like this chair. It's nice. It's old. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been listening to you for a while, and I get the f- thing that you say that nothing is more important than how we feel, and the quickest way to get things that we want is to be happy. So. And what you want is to be happy. That's interesting the way you said it. The, the quickest way to get what we want is to be happy. Well, but the reason you want what you want is because you think having it will make you happy. So the quickest way to what you want is to be happy so you're already there. So then it can come more quickly. But humans worry about that. If I'm already happy even though it hasn't come, somebody's going to hold it out. Like my mother did. If I was good, then she didn't give it to me. I really needed to be needy. I need to be needy before my mother would give stuff to me. And the universe is not your mother. Your mother was screwed up. So my question is, throughout the day, I look for things, not to make me happy, but I look for things to appreciate. You know, oh, there's a cute little puppy, or look at the sky, it's such a beautiful That's color That's a nice blue. thing to keep momentum going. In other words, from a place of alignment, then deliberately looking for positive aspects can hold you in that steady vibration and allow the momentum to increase, which is more and more satisfying, isn't it? Right. But a lot of the times when I'm kind of checking in with myself, you know, you get caught up in the day and you're just kind of, you know, on go mode. I find asking myself, okay, how am I feeling? Am I happy? And a lot of times I'm like, meh, okay. You know, I'm not unhappy, but I'm not like, you know, jump up and down. I just want an Oscar happy, you know? So, Almost no one is. <laughs> I mean, I don't expect to be that on, a cons- on an everyday basis, but I feel like my happier should be happier, if that makes sense. This is the reason that on the emotional scale, let's say there's sadness and happiness, or let's say that there's love and hate, or let's say that there's depression and appreciation. And so happy is there. But when you use the word satisfied, you could be depressed or revengeful. And in your revenge, there's satisfaction. If you will use satisfaction as what you're reaching for, then wherever you are, you can lean more in the direction of who you are and therefore get more momentum going in that direction. Don't make work of being satisfied either. But it is nice to notice it when it's just happening. Just notice it and therefore perpetuate it. Since law of attraction is responding to however you're feeling and you catch a glimpse that you're not feeling that great, then it's good to leave the topic if you can. And the more aware you are of how you feel, then the more you can turn from the unsatisfied to the satisfied. It just gets easier and easier. But if you aren't paying attention and you really get on a negative rant, then of course it's much more difficult. You need a lobotomy or a good night's sleep. We recommend over the lobotomy or meditation, which we recommend really over a good night's sleep. We would rather see you in appreciation than meditation because in either case, there's no resistance, but sometimes you just can't get to appreciation. And so just be soft about this. So your question is around feeling some dissatisfaction and wanting to turn it into satisfaction. Yeah, to just be happier because sometimes when I'm checking in with myself about how I feel, I feel, oh, maybe I'm doing that thing you said that we're doing. But here's the thing, and we're so happy that you are helping us to talk about this here because here's the thing. So here I am in this moment of time and I'm having this manifestation. And in this example, I don't feel all that happy, but it is what it is. Yes. So it's got to be enough because it is what it is. And why is it what it is? Because of the momentum that created it. In other words, once something has manifested, you're really going to like this. The emotion that you might call dissatisfaction or not happy, that's a manifestation. Let's talk about this. So you're tuned in, you're in the receptive mode and an idea comes to you and you feel the enthusiasm of the idea. So you know you were in the receptive mode because the idea feels really good. Well, along with that idea is the emotion of happiness. And so you're in a manifested moment where the emotion is part of the manifestation. So what we're getting at here is that when you are feeling some dissatisfaction, it's manifested and therefore it's already happened. And therefore the momentum is already underway. And therefore there's not all that much that you can do about it right here and now. 
when it feels like that to you. But you take note of it and you acknowledge that you want to feel happy and you deliberately launch some more rockets of desire into your vortex and then you get a good night's sleep and when you wake up in the morning you deliberately meditate because you know that meditation takes the edge off so now this day this next day let's call it Sunday you've meditated and so now your chance of and we use that word because we know how you use that word your chance of happiness is greater now that you've meditated this Sunday morning than it was before you did so you meditate for 15 or 20 minutes and then you just go into your day and you feel whatever you feel but when you're feeling it it's really sort of kind of too late to do anything about it because it's the result of energy that you've already flowed are you getting what we're talking about you can't think your way out of it you can't talk your way out of it you can't say universe I want to take back all the momentum that I had about that because I didn't really mean it and after all I want to be happy it's gonna play out kind of the way the momentum is but now you launch another rocket of wanting more clarity of more happiness and then on Monday you meditate and you go as far as you can go into the day and feel as good as you can feel and then on Tuesday and then on Wednesday and then on Thursday and then on Friday and before you know it this meditation has put you into more of a receiving mode so that you are feeling more satisfaction about more things it's preemptive it's getting out ahead of it when you're in an unhappy moment usually the most that you can do is make a decision to do a better job of vibrationally preparing future moments but when you're right in the middle of it can't you see downward spirals aren't downward spirals evident and the more you struggle and squirm within them the faster they swirl and the more downward they go and so it really is about not trying to think your way out of it in that moment it's like we've been offering an analogy it's like what's happening now the manifestation is sort of like gum that you've chewed all the flavor out of <laughs> and the new juice is over here in the new thoughts and in the new things that you're receiving you see and so when you feel dissatisfaction just let it be and know that your vortex is queued up and that you're being called to more things and let the satisfaction come from new things don't try to wring it out of the old things because you usually don't you usually just find more to be dissatisfied about you want to talk about something specific well I just kind of feel like sometimes that's my set point you know a little bit like mm, if I don't look for things to be happy about you know we'll go along with you we'll let you call it your set point but what do you think the set point of your inner being is elation happy oh. And in fact, the only reason that you can feel that discomfort is because you have departed or you've moved away from the vibration that your inner being feels and your inner being is not going to join you over there. So there are two set points involved here. The emotional vibrational set point of your inner being and yours. Isn't it sort of satisfying to know that your dissatisfaction is an indicator of where you stand? Can't that be a little satisfying? Well, at least I know I'm not in alignment with my inner being. And at least I know my inner being is looking at this differently. And at least I know there's help on the way. And at least I know I'm blocking the help right now. And at least I know that it won't last like this forever. You see what we're getting at? Doesn't knowing how this all works help? Esther was annoyed at first when she realized that her negative emotion was because we were in a different vibrational place than she was and one day after some pretty strong momentum she said Abraham if you're my friend come over here where I am and close the gap I think you should just come over here where I am and I'll feel better and we said we're not coming but we will hold tight here and we will shine a bright light and we will never take our eyes off of you and we will never stop focusing upon all that we know that you want so that sometime when you are not doing that thing you're doing that is keeping you apart from us you might stumble into a little bit of happiness right so what's that thing that I'm doing that's keeping me apart from you it's that it's that okay it's that it's <laughs> thinking too much about it it's noticing that I'm not happy it's trying to figure out why I'm not happy it's trying to wring the unhappiness out and put more happiness in in other words it's chewing the old gum it's too much attention to the old reality and we're calling the old reality this reality that you're calling right now this red hot minute that's old that's old because the juice is chewed out of it 
and where your satisfaction will always be is in the new movement with the new energy. That's where satisfaction is. Ah, that's what satisfaction is. Satisfaction is tuning in and allowing the frequencies to blend as you evolve and attract as one set point. So you can have an ornery set point. Your inner being never will. You can have a confused set point. Your inner being is always in clarity. You can have a hateful set point. Your inner being is always in love. So as you meditate and deactivate, because when you quiet your mind, you quiet thought. When you quiet thought, you stop any vibration. When there's no vibration, then you've quieted yourself. And now you can easily find your way by law of attraction in the absence of resistance, right into vibrational harmony with who you are. And so that was a good sequence, wasn't it? So now as you find that satisfaction, by no longer doing that thing you do that's a negative way of saying it. if you'll stop doing that thing you do it's like your cork is floating that's what alignment is you can hold it under the water that's what not alignment is but when you let go of it it's going to bob right back up there but most humans try to overthink things they try to figure out what's wrong what am i doing wrong why isn't it working out and we say just let it go it's just going to get worse when you're in that mindset Esther has been doing something that is very productive for her and we want to tell you about it because we know that it could be productive for you too because you are a transmitting and receiving mechanism all the time in other words you are transmitting thoughts and receiving thoughts and so you're broadcasting thoughts to each other you are all more telepathic than you know so an idea will come into Esther's mind sometimes and she's been stopping and saying asking of herself what was I doing how was I feeling before that thought came because she's wanting to ascertain whether she received that thought from alignment and therefore it's coming from her vortex and from her inner being and therefore it's a really good idea to help her move along on her unfolding of this trail or did I receive it from something I've been worried about it's a really fun game to play where did that thought come from in other words you say the devil made me do it You've been playing that game for a while did it come from alignment is a thought of upliftment do I feel exhilarated as I think of it? or is it a protective thought is it a warning thought is it a thought that I need to do something about and so as more and more you're in the receiving mode then more of the thoughts that you receive will feel like that you have control over everything that comes to you starting with your own reception of your own thoughts do you believe that you create your own reality have you wondered how it happens? Are you starting to get the sense of what your own point of attraction is and how you accomplish your own point of attraction? And so in the same way that you could go into a bookstore or a library and there are all of these books on different subjects with different attitudes and moods within them. And just because you have the ability to read the language in which they are written doesn't mean that you want to read every one of them. Some of them are more suited to what you're looking for, to who you are. And so the same thing is true of everything in the world. There's a plethora out there. So many things, so many experiences, so much potential. And so who was I when I walked into the room is more important than what I found when I got there. That's a good way of saying it. How I'm feeling vibrationally walking in matters so much more than what was in there before I got there. Because what's in there is a perceptual thing anyway. Did we get there for you? Yes. Thank you very much. Be playful about it. Oh. A, a little less heady and a little more emotionally. That's just incredible <laughs> that I got. Thank you. Yeah.